Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to install Team Encoders, Mystery Dawson 4 player fix, with all available patches so you can use all 4 player controls on third party apps, like Retroarch, have universal control of the volume keys, and exclude stock apps from a control fix exclusion list. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any videos or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. For this guide, you're going to need a quality micro USB cable. If you're in need of one, please find the affiliate link in my description. You'll know that you have a quality cable, and you'll be helping this small channel grow. Thank you. This guide also assumes that you've downloaded and extracted in two different folders both the original Mystery Dawson experience and the updated patch for the software. If you have not, do not worry, as you'll find links to both of those items in my description. You'll also need to update your exclusion list. For this guide, we'll be downloading and updating the one uploaded by Arcade420. I do wish to thank all of Team Encoder for the shout-out on the new patch. I've got to admit, I thought that was kind of cool, as I've never been spoken of in any software release. Again, thank you. If you've installed the Mystery Dawson experience and you'd simply like to update, feel free to move to the next section. However, if this is your first time, with the power to your cab off and your USB connected to your cab and PC, Navigate to the location of your original fix software, double-click on the executable icon, and start the software. Once started, the software will give you two options. If you've not installed the USB driver, do so now. However, if you've already installed this driver for another one of Team Encoder's software fixes, you can skip this part. After the driver is installed, activate the second option to install the fix, and when prompted, power up your Simpsons cab and let the arcade cabinet and software connect. After we power up, we'll need to wait for the software and the cab to see each other. However, once they do, the software will read and verify that the PCB is correct for the cab. After verifying that all is as expected, the software will ask that we toggle the power, and once done, the software will wait for the cab to boot. When done booting, the software will start transferring all the needed files to the PCB. The time it takes will be different for each of us, and much of it depends on the speed of your computer and the quality of the micro SD cable that is used. Because this section takes so long, I will be fast forwarding it. However, this took me around 5 minutes. Because we have a bit of time, I do wish to take this opportunity to ask that you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, turn those notifications on, and show some interaction with the channel by leaving me a comment. I do my best to reach out to everyone, and I love the show of support. Please remember that these are all small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this little channel, your support means the world. Thank you. Once the file transfer hits 100%, the cabinet will automatically reboot. However, we're not done as of yet. As the cabinet reboots, we will get a notification from our software that it is waiting for someone to physically authorize ADB before the software can continue. Basically, you just wait until your cab presents you with a pop-up regarding the ADB software. Once you get the pop-up on the cab, make sure you not only authorize ADB but also make our next step easier by clicking on the small box regarding always trusting this computer in the future. Doing this extra step now, will make patching this cab with this computer easier for us in the future. Our software will again take over the automation, and the fix will now be applied to our cabinet. Once the fix is done being installed, the system will reboot once again. However, this time, when it reboots, we'll not have to authorize ADB, and the software automation will continue until it reports that it's done. Again, the software will request authorization, and as discussed, the software, computer, and arcade cabinet should now be listed as safe to work with one another. Letting the automation continue unhampered. Our software now lets us know it's waiting for the unit to fully boot.
After the system is fully booted and the software sees that everything is fine, you should see a message that says, we're done here. When you see that message, you can be confident that step one has been done correctly and that you are ready to start step two, which will be updating our four player fix and adding your exclusion list of edited and repacked stock APKs. For our next step, we'll be installing the patch and adding our exclusion list. Please remember to check for the links in the description for both the updated software and the exclusion list. You will need them both. Next, power the cab down and download and extract both files. After you've downloaded and extracted both to the same folder, locate that folder and find and double click on the mystery Dawson executable. This will start the updater and as you should see, we have a few options. As of making this video, I personally am unable to fully install this fix from this program without running the original software first. Also, I have no idea if this new software will one day replace the existing one or if it will always be a patch. All I know for sure is that I was unable to get it to work any other way. I'll also say that, based on nothing more than looks, this new software seems to be designed as a replacement option. However, I could be very wrong, and this is all just speculation. With that all out of the way, make sure you have the update existing option clicked, and before we get too far, let's speak about the exclusion list. As you can see, there are a few text documents in the folder called Control Fix, with one of them being in all lowercase letters. Use a note editing software to open that file, and let's take a closer look. You can use the standard version of Notepad to open this file, or if you want to be really fancy, you can give Notepad++ a try. It's free and made for editing code, not just viewing text documents. If your copy of the Control Fix exclusion list doesn't have line 8 where it says com, dot, arcade, too, then make sure you add that, as I've heard that some of the APKs use that internal naming convention. You must also hit enter after you add an APK name to the list or it will not load that entered name. Once again, find the Mystery Dawson Experience software, make sure and verify that you have the option, updated the existing checked, and when ready, click on option 2, where it says install Simpsons control fix to PCB. As you should already have the drivers needed installed from our first step, and option 2 will update the control fix and add our execution list. I'd also like to point out that this update to the 4 player fix also gives you access to the volume controls globally, and if you wish to hard mod your system with extra buttons, you can now add buttons to the blank inputs on the Simpsons control board. With our program started, we'll power up the Simpsons cab again, let the software patch the control fix, and add our exclusion list so when and if we install repacked and edited stock arcade 1UP apps, they will work as well. These next few steps should be very automated for us. Once the system is fully booted, the software will see that we've installed the first patch, and it will now uninstall that input fix, and replace it with the newer version. As part of that process, your cab will reboot once again. Remember to have patience, as shutting down and rebooting will take a little time. As you wait, you could always hit that like button, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us grow and helps us beat that YouTube algorithm. Thank you. If you recall, and I'm sure that you do, as we just did this a few minutes ago, we have pre-approved authorization, so this will again be very automated, and we basically chill and wait as Mystery Encoder's software makes everything right with the world. Once again, we get those famous last words, we're done here. However, in truth, these steps simply apply the fix, and to take full advantage of this fix, you must install the pre-configured copy of RetroArch, and you'll need to transfer your game ROMs to the cab. However, we're going to leave that for another video. I do wish to thank all of you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, or hell, even if you didn't, please leave me a like, leave me a comment under the description, and if you've not done so, subscribe. These are all small clicks on the mouse for you, but to this little channel, they mean the world. Thank you.